What if the very ground beneath your feet was laced with ancient secrets, glimmering traces of gold that have evaded eyes for centuries? Not in treasure chests, not in vaults, but in places nature herself has chosen. From the high crests of remote mountains to the most unexpected desert beds, gold doesn't hide randomly, it follows a silent code of geology. And once you learn to read that code, the world will never look the same again. 1. Ancient riverbeds and alluvial plains Flowing for millennia, carving through layers of earth, rivers are nature's eternal miners. Gold, being one of the heaviest elements, doesn't float away, it sinks. Over centuries in places where the river slows down, bends or crashes into rocks, flakes and nuggets settle into cracks and gravel beds. These spots, called placer deposits, are gold's resting grounds. Today, dry riverbeds and ancient alluvial plains that no longer flow can hold fortunes. Prospectors search these with a keen eye for false bedrock. Hard layers above true bedrock, where gold sometimes traps. Whether in Alaska's creeks or Ethiopia's dry washes, if the river once flowed, gold might have flowed with it. 2. Quartz veins in mountain terrains Climb into any mineral-rich mountain range, and you'll find something curious. White streaks of quartz slashing through dark host rocks. These are ancient hydrothermal veins, remnants of superheated water that once surged through fissures deep underground. When that water cooled, it left behind minerals, including gold. Quartz is one of gold's most loyal companions. In these veins, gold can occur as visible grains, or even in its rawest, crystalline form. Look for oxidized quartz with rusty staining. Iron and manganese often accompany gold. And remember, the messier and rougher the vein looks, the more it's worth inspecting. 3. Desert Landscapes and Dry Washes it might seem paradoxical, but deserts can be golden, literally. Flash floods and seasonal rains erode gold-bearing rocks and concentrate the particles in dry washes. The heavier the particle, the less distance it travels, settling into crevices, beneath boulders, and behind natural riffles. In places like the Mojave or Donakil, desert prospecting is a game of patience. You study the flow patterns, hunt for black sand indicators, and test sediment layers where nature did the hard work of separation for you. Always remember, gold moves only during water flow. In dry seasons, you're reading yesterday's storm. 4. Volcanic Belts and Geothermal Zones Where there's fire, there may be gold. Volcanic belts, with their hot springs, geysers, and mineral vents, are geological hotspots, quite literally, for gold deposition. Hydrothermal systems push gold-laden fluids into surrounding rocks. As they cool, gold precipitates out, forming epithermal veins. Many of the world's largest gold mines sit atop these ancient systems, from Nevada's Carlin Trend to the Rift Valley. If you spot sinter terraces, silica-cemented ground, or even rotten egg-smelling sulfur springs, you may be near a hidden vault forged by volcanic heat. 5. Glacial Moraine Fields and Uplift Zones as glaciers grind across the earth, they scoop up everything. Soil, rock, and gold. When they melt, they leave behind moraines. Vast piles of glacial debris where gold can concentrate. Often overlooked by traditional prospectors, these fields may hold untouched deposits, especially where ancient mountain ranges once stood. Uplift zones where tectonic forces have heaved old oceanic crust upward can expose previously buried gold-rich formations. Look for sedimentary rocks with folded layers, thrust faults, and evidence of high-pressure metamorphism. Gold often rides these geological escalators to the surface. 6. Swamps, jungle streams, and tropical regions. Yes, even the greenest landscapes may cradle gold. In tropical regions, high rainfall and fast erosion means sediments are constantly on the move. Gold found here may be finer, but more abundant. Look for gravel bars in jungle rivers, spots where flow reduces, and black sand swirls. Ancient tropical terrains also host lateritic gold, formed by deep weathering of gold-bearing rocks. These laterites can be rich sources, especially in West Africa and parts of South America. Even in dense canopy, gold leaves a quiet fingerprint. 7. Iron-stained terrains and gossan outcrops 
one of nature's most overlooked clues? Iron staining. Oxidized iron gives rocks a rusty red or orange color, and it often indicates mineralization. Gossens, the weathered caps of sulfide ore bodies, are key indicators for hidden deposits. They form from oxidation of pyrite and other sulfides, which often occur alongside gold. To the untrained eye, it's just rust. But to a seasoned prospector, it's a spotlight. Gossens atop quartz veins or felsic intrusions? That's a potential jackpot. 8. Greenstone Belts and Ancient Cratons Some of Earth's oldest rocks hide some of its most valuable treasures. Greenstone belts, ancient volcanic and sedimentary sequences, are the backbone of gold mining in places like South Africa, Canada, and Australia. These belts formed billions of years ago, and over time, have been subjected to intense heat, pressure, and mineralization. Finding gold here is a matter of geological reading. Look for banded iron formations, ultramafic flows, and contact zones between different rock types. These ancient belts are the veins of planetary memory, and often the veins of gold. 9. Coastal regions and oceanic placers. Even shorelines can glitter. Coastal placer deposits form where rivers carry gold down to the ocean, and wave action concentrates it along the beach. In places like Nome, Alaska, beach mining is real and lucrative. Fine gold settles into heavy mineral layers, often visible as black streaks in beach sands. These oceanic placers are hard to mine, but the rewards are high. If you see garnet, magnetite, or heavy black sand collecting in wave troughs, it might be time to dig deeper, literally. 10. Unlikely places, urban fringe, and man-altered landscapes. Surprising, isn't it? But abandoned quarries, tailings from old mines, and even construction sites near known gold regions can yield results. Humans have moved mountains, sometimes exposing what nature buried. Check abandoned hydraulic cuts, old dredge tailings, or even stream cuts near roadbeds. In these reshaped terrains, modern prospectors have uncovered mist veins, flakes, and fine dust that escaped early methods. Because gold, after all, doesn't expire, it simply waits. 11. Glacial Moraines and Till Deposits Now imagine the titanic weight of a glacier grinding its way across ancient bedrock. As it scrapes and churns, it carries with it fragments of rock, including gold. When these glaciers retreat, they leave behind moraine, piles of unsorted debris rich in potential. Till deposits, often dumped erratically across a landscape, can be gold-bearing treasure fields. These environments demand careful examination, with particular attention to areas where melting ice may have concentrated sediments, like kettle holes or ice margin streams. Twelfth, high-energy alluvial fans. Where mountain streams spill out onto flatter terrain, they form fan-shaped deposits of gravel and sediment. These alluvial fans may seem chaotic, but the heaviest materials, like gold, are always pulled to specific spots, the base, where water velocity slows just enough. Prospectors who understand how to read the slope gradient and stream discharge patterns in these fans can find significant gold concentrations, often right beneath their boots. 13. Volcanic Hydrothermal Fields some of the world's richest gold mines, including those in Papua New Guinea and the Andes, are found in zones of intense volcanic activity. Why? Because rising magma often brings with it hydrothermal fluids, superheated water rich in dissolved minerals. As these fluids cool near the surface, they precipitate metals, including gold, into cracks and cavities. These epithermal systems often occur in clusters, associated with faults, calderas, and sulfurous springs. If you're hiking through sulfur-scented, steam-venting rock fields, you might just be treading on tomorrow's bonanza. 14. Iron-stained quartz outcrops. Look closely at rocks tinted red, orange, or yellow. These iron-stained zones, also known as gossens, are oxidized remains of sulfide-bearing rocks that often accompany gold. Their telltale color is a neon sign for hidden treasure. When you find these outcrops, especially if accompanied by quartz veins and brecciated rock, you're in a prime gold-bearing environment. Check slopes, road cuts, and natural weathered exposures. 
15. Remote Desert Bedrock Zones In arid landscapes, vegetation is sparse, but the clues are laid bare. Wind-scoured bedrock, dry washes, and exposed fissures create perfect conditions for spotting residual gold deposits. Because deserts lack heavy water erosion, gold often remains close to its source. Prospecting here is a matter of scanning erosion gullies, slope wash zones, and around caliche layers, those hard white calcium crusts where fine gold can accumulate. 16. Ancient riverbeds buried beneath sediment. Not all rivers run above ground. Some, especially in tectonically active regions, have been buried over millennia by landslides or volcanic activity. These paleo channels once flowed rich with gold and now lie hidden, waiting to be rediscovered. Finding them is difficult but rewarding. Clues include rounded river stones embedded in cliff sides, terraces of old gravel bars, or water-worn quartz boulders high above current stream levels. 17. Granite contact zones and dikes gold has a tendency to follow certain geological contacts, particularly where intrusive granites meet surrounding metamorphic or sedimentary rock. These boundaries, often fractured and mineralized, are prime sites for hydrothermal activity. Dikes, vertical sheets of quartz or porphyry, often cut through these contacts and act as conduits for gold-laden fluids. If you find a weathered granite contact with a swarm of quartz dikes, you're in business. 18. Black sand traps and magnetic signals. You've probably heard of black sand as a common companion to gold, but what does it really tell you? These heavy mineral deposits, rich in magnetite, ilmenite, and garnet, collect where water slows down. In nature, that means behind large boulders, inside crevices, or just before river bends. Where black sand accumulates, gold often follows. Use a magnet to scan sands. The more magnetite, the better your odds. 19. Bedrock fissures and natural riffles. When rivers carve through soft rock, they leave behind grooves, fissures, and natural riffles, ideal traps for heavy gold particles. These bedrock features are natural gold catchers, especially where waterfalls or sudden drops in stream gradient occur. Over time, gold flakes fall in and get lodged deep into these crevices. A thin film of clay or moss might hide them from view, but a careful eye and a bit of patience pays off. 20. Super Gene Enrichment Zones Finally, let's talk about a hidden force of nature. Super Gene Enrichment This is where groundwaters charged with oxygen and acids dissolve gold from higher levels and redeposit it in concentrated form deeper down. These enriched zones often occur beneath iron-rich caps, making detection difficult but extremely rewarding. Knowing the signs oxidize outcrops, acidic soils, and broken quartz could lead you to deposits far richer than their surface appearance suggests. Gold isn't always found where it shines. Sometimes it hides in shadows, beneath layers of forgotten history, or inside veins of quartz, overlooked for centuries. The wilderness doesn't reveal its secrets easily, but for those who know how to listen, how to read the language of stone and soil, the rewards are immense. From desert ravines to volcanic ridges, frozen moraines to buried rivers, gold waits. So the next time you're standing before a dry creek bed, an oddly stained rock face, or a forgotten hillside, ask yourself, what stories lie beneath your feet? Because in nature, the clues are always there. You just need to know how to see them. This is EGS Pro. If this journey through the world of natural gold has sparked your curiosity, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with fellow explorers. There's always more to discover, and we're just getting started. Until next time, may your pan be heavy, your heart light, and your eyes forever tuned to the golden whispers of the earth.